All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How do you like this room set? You don't? How about over here? You like it over here? You don't like it over here. How about here? Do you like it? <laughs> and Jason, we're not even talking about the food. I'm just talking about a room set. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, we do have uh, a pretty packed agenda. So without uh, further ado, I have Audra texting Jill. I know that she was just finishing up an appointment. So let's see, we have a couple of new residents here. This is always a good memory test. Mr. and Mrs. Smith are on the front row in Gardens North. Welcome, welcome. And five weeks. Well, congratulations. And let's see, we've heard who, the Hillens, yes, right behind Debbie and yes, the Clements, yes. Welcome, welcome. And you're in Gardens North moving to Gardens South, or did I get that? You're going to end up in Gardens South. So you started in Gardens South and you're going to, okay, great. Well, welcome. Anyone else? Thank you for helping me there, Tom. We have Louise back there, one of our Captain's Club members who always comes, so thank you for being here. All right. She's Jill's on her way. So how about Robert Kozicki? Is he here? We are going to have you start us off with an employee, uh, employee of the month, and we have Gloria here. G Gloria's right here. Come on up, Gloria. Benga <laughs> key. You didn't know that I, I knew a little bit of Spanish, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gloria. Gloria has been with San Ho Cove almost, I think, 17 years. So she's one of our longer term employees. <laughs> what I can say about Gloria is that just about if not every time we ask her to do what we ask her to do, she does it with a smile, she does it consistently, and she's always there when we need her, especially when we've had like a call out, we can ask Gloria to, to fill in for that person and she's more than willing to do it. She's just a, a wonderful, wonderful person and I can't say enough about her and how proud we are to have her here at San Ho Cove for as long as we've had. So congratulations, Gloria. Well deserved, without a doubt. Would you like me to go right into the? Well, I, and I think um, Gloria, I think you were nominated because you were witnessed in oh, yes. in this uh, in Water's Edge, helping a resident. So Gloria is a housekeeper in Water's Edge. She doesn't have to really have much of any patient contact, but. But Gloria is not just a housekeeper that cleans. She also attends to the needs of residents as she sees them along the way. And that's what makes her an exceptional employee. Yes, you're welcome. So you're good. I don't have the $50,000 check for you today. They, see, these residents, they wouldn't let me write that for you. Okay, so you're good. Thank you for being here. All right, all right. Yeah, yes, you can leave. You can leave. <laughs> Would you like me to swipe yeah. the cigarette? Yeah, we're going to stay with Robert. Um, he has um, a couple of other updates. So while you're up there, why don't you just proceed? So actually, this has to do with EVS. And the reason I'm here is because I'd like to, I, I, I wanted to get this, the notice out that we are going to have the EVS resident uh, housekeeping surveys coming up on the week of June 3rd. And 
what I what I'm trying to do is to get some more folks to uh, to participate because we had I think out of 210 folks we had 80 that did not, and that could be attributed to possibly some snowbirds and things like that. But we're trying to get more participation so that we can get an accurate uh, guesstimation as to how we're doing in EVS. You know, how are the housekeepers doing? How are you know those kind of things? If there's things that are not getting done, or if there are you just have some concerns about certain things, we'd like to know that. On this survey. It is a front and a back survey and you have choices between one and five, whether that's disappointing as far as the from the numbers go, disappointing at one and exceptional at number five. And just one or two of the questions is, uh, is your housekeeper courteous? Uh, are your housekeep are housekeeper supervisors responsive in a timely manner? So it's, it's a front and a back survey. We're going to be putting these out and I'm not sure um, if Rajane is here or not, but I believe we deliver these to your door, but I could be wrong and I'll have to ask that. But however, we're, we're gonna get these to you so that you can fill these out. And then once you get them back, we're gonna tabulate or tally tally them and figure out how we're doing. And if there's anything that we need to, we need to improve on, we're certainly going to be doing that. So just wanted to get the word out. That's why I'm up here. So that's all I got. Great, Robert. And yeah, we can give them a round of applause. And is Helen Siebold in here? She is. Helen, I think this came about um, under your leadership um, and, uh, and Meryl Schneider uh, at the Schneider at the time was the president of the resident council. Helen was uh, the chairperson of the HMS committee. And so we agreed that we would um, do these quality checks with the housekeeper. So, when Robert said that we had only received how many back? 80 folks did not participate, but about 110, I think, or something like that, That's 114. Great. And the results were pretty good, so I said, hey, you know? They were good. From the <laughs> folks that did respond, it was a 95% satisfaction, but there were some issues that we found, and we addressed those with the individual residents to make sure that we were you know, meeting your expectation. Good. Thank you, Robert. Right, uh, let's see here. Kurt, do you wanna come up and, actually, you know what we'll do, hold on. We'll bring Jill up, she can do the marketing report as she was closing out a, uh, an appointment. Did you get the sale, Jill? Uh, not yet. Not yet? <laughs> Soon enough. So today was a busy day. I actually had two appointments at the same time. <laughs> a little stressful. <laughs> but uh, we actually did have like three uh, appointments in the office today. So, um, <clears throat> so what we have um, for, um, we're talking about the prior month. So we had two sales and we ended up with five open. Um, so we have, uh, we are actually have one sale this month. And then um, we have two more scheduled for um, next week. So then we'll have, we'll be down to three again. Um, we do have a few transfers and um, that does hold things up a little bit because we have to get the home ready. That takes about eight weeks and then that person moves and that's when we can kind of resell it to somebody else. So um, we are getting um, a lot of people that are coming in and uh, wanting some big floor plans. And um, we just don't have as many big floor plans. I mean, we have more one bedrooms and two bedrooms in inventory. So um, <clears throat> we don't want people coming in and joining the wait list for a villa. And then, um, you know, they're realistically, are they really gonna get a villa on the outside wait list? And that's probably not. Um, so we, we tell people, if you want to come in and you want to get a villa or you want to get a bigger uh, two-bedroom den, you're going to have to buy a one-bedroom or a two-bedroom. You'll become a resident priority and you'll get it much quicker that way. So if your friends are talking to you about joining Sand Hill Cove, I'd appreciate if you could kind of share that um, information with them just so they know because I don't want to waste their time um, for them to come in and say they want a villa and then we, we just can't have one for them. As you know, everybody does need to meet um, a physical criteria here. So we don't want people 
joining a wait list and, and they're on for seven or eight years because we can't get them a villa and when they're on the wait list, they're not pre-approved physically. So we've been trying to do a lot of education um, with our visitors on that. Um, <clears throat> so a, a couple of these sales next week are actually people that are taking two bedrooms on a temporary basis so they can get a, a bigger floor plan. So we'll have some more movement there. Um, on the wait list right now, we do have uh, 59. So that's a higher number than in the past. We were kind of uh, fluttering around 55, 56. Um, and uh, we do have an, uh, um, an event at Miles Grant. It's on the 22nd and um, it's called a senior living seminar. So if you have friends that want to learn about Sand Hill Cove and that life, uh, life care concept, um, I would invite you to, you know, come along and invite your friends to that as well. Um, so right now at this moment, it's five open. And then after next week, it'll be three open apartments. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Keep. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Well, that's great. Um, also, by the way, um, you know, I went to the, I have to thank Meryl for this. So I went to the scholarship ceremony and um, Meryl said that the uh, life expectancy is 79. So um, that's obviously gone down. And that was kind of shocking to me. And I have all these people coming in and they're t 80, 82 or 84 and they're telling me they're not ready. So now... <laughs> I have to share the life expectancy with them and tell them they need to, you know, get realistic. So thank you very much. I love it, Jill. Just, uh, um, I want to just kind of piggyback on this too. Sure. Um, no, no, that's okay. Um, so Jill and I, on a monthly basis, we have a call with our advertising agency just to talk about strategy and, and how we're doing at the community. and just results, both digitally as, as well as through our direct mail. And I've had some conversations with Mr. Cowell and Merrill and, and Don Hall and, and the Finance Committee on just really pushing, you know, the second person, you know, how do we, how do we attract? I guess there's probably an assumption that um, if you move in a couple, they're going to be a little bit... Um, uh, less, uh, lesser uh, in age, lower in age. Um, so last year, with uh, the help of Bob and Merrill, we were able to secure the, the golfing contract over at Crane Watch. Um, and so as Jill and I were talking to the advertising agency yesterday, we started looking at our website a little bit more closely. And I've, I've received some feedback from, from people on the website. And so um, they're going to they're gonna look at the website. We, we gave them some recommendations because we, we have a nice gallery of pictures, but we wanna focus more on the active side of it too and more of the golfing and, and maybe even taking some more pictures of pickleball because pickleball you know, comes up frequently with Jill and, and um, while we don't have a pickleball court, there is one five minutes. So how do we leverage even the local community resources and then showcase that on our website. So um, I just, you know, I thank Jill for her openness to that. And, and we all want the same thing. We want, we want to continue to be strong occupancy wise and succeed and success. And, and um, so I just wanted to throw that out, uh, throw that out there. And if you, if you have a computer, um, go out and look at our website. And if there is something um, that you would recommend, let Jill or myself know, and we'll, we'll feed that up. As we were looking at it yesterday, we noticed something that was really irritating. With every click, a notification came up. Um, and I said, you know, that would really irritate me. If I'm a consumer and I'm looking at a product and I'm trying to navigate through the website and every time I make a click, something comes up. So they were able to fix that right away. Um, so I just, you know, take a look and, and if there is something from your, from, from your eyes or from your perspective that you think could enhance the experience of the consumer, 
let us know. Yeah, Mary Lou. Can I ask what the purpose? It's actually at the, at the park. So it's right. So if you come out, so if you come out Sand Hill Cove, take a left, and then at the light, take another left. And it's going to be as you're coming around that bend, you know, where that new housing track is over there. It's in that park over there. Okay. So it's really close. Yeah. And I was just going to add that um, Crane Watch is actually going to be um, adding pickleball courts. So that's going to help us a lot because we always, already have that partnership there. Yeah. So. so good. And then um, if I could just say Absolutely. something about the monthly fees. Yeah. So I know there was talk about the monthly fees for the second person and all that. So you have to understand right now the economy that we're in. Um, believe it or not, people look at the monthly fees more than they do the entrance fees. Um, and so <clears throat> we don't also don't want to price ourselves out of the market and make them so high that people won't want to come here. So... Um, we have to kind of be careful how we look at that, too. Yeah, yeah. So. good point, Joe. All right, go get him, Tiger. <laughs> yeah, let's give her a round of applause. All right, Kurt, do you want to come up and do the honors of the Employee of the Month, and then we can just roll right into your... Roll right into it. Thank you, Kurt. Good afternoon. Um, I don't know if you remember Lynn uh, from the past. Lynn used to work for us for security, and she did that for about seven years. She had a little two-year hiatus, um, but recouped, came back, wanted to be a driver, has been a driver now for a little over a year. So what do, what to say about Lynn? Lynn is very kind. She's compassionate. She pays attention to the details, and she really loves it here. You can't beat that when someone that works for you loves working here, loves the people here, feels a part of this community. It's a wonderful thing. Um, the reason Lynn got nominated for Employee of the Month is because of you. You all submitted several um, extraordinary impressions for her. And I really appreciate that. You guys have some very kind words for Lynn. So with that, congratulations, Lynn. All right, I'm going to try not to bore you guys too much today. Um, first, we're going to do fire safety, and then we're going to get into uh, hurricane preparedness. So we're doing fire safety. It was Sean's recommendation that we do this uh, every quarter. So we're going to do one this, this month, and then we're going to do one in a couple months down the road, just to remind everybody of the importance of fire safety. Um, so we do have a fire emergency plan. I don't know how many of you guys have seen it, but in that plan, it lists locations of pools, um, locations of extinguishers, and it's listed for the entire community. Um, so in the fire plan, it actually gives you a little more in-depth of what you should do in case of a fire. We don't have time for that big book. It's a pretty good stack of pages. So the first thing that we do, uh, we use the acronym RACE. So RACE is how we respond to a fire. In RACE, the R means rescue. So the first thing we do is we want to get everyone out of the immediate danger. Um, the second is activate the alarm, which is the pull. It's right back here. There's a pool here. There's a pool back in this room. We hit that pool and then we alert people. So the alert part of it is, is that we tell people that we see either coming towards us or, or um, in another area to stay away from this area if we had a fire here. And then the C is contained. So anytime we leave a room, we make sure we close our doors. The reason we do that is because we don't want to introduce oxygen. The more oxygen you introduce to a fire, the bigger the fire is going to get. A fire doubles in size every 30 seconds, so just think about that. Um, and then E is the extinguish part. Now, we don't expect you to do the extinguishing part. We expect you to do the other E, which is evacuate. We will arrive, security, maintenance, housekeeping, we will arrive with extinguishers in tow and be ready to try to extinguish the fire. And again, if it's too big for us, then... 
will evacuate as well. We have five types of fire extinguishers. We only use four types here. The primary type is A, B, and C. The majority of our extinguishers are A, B, C extinguishers. Um, we do not have class D because we don't work with burning metals. We do, however, have class K. Now, in every kitchen, we have K extinguishers. We also have K extinguishers around our fireplaces. So if you know where those are, you'll see the big fire extinguishers there. Um, now, we also have what they call high flow extinguishers for our generators, and that's specifically geared for diesel fuel. How do we use a fire extinguisher? We use the pass method. So P, pull the pin. A, aim the hose. You're aiming at the base of the fire. S is sweep, sweep side to side. Up, oh, sorry, squeeze, then sweep. Back up. All right, so that's, that's pretty simple. And, and the PASS acronym will help you remember, you know, the process in order to do it. Resident response, what should you do? All right, so again, we're talking about knowing the layout of where you live, identifying as you walk through your corridors where the poles are, where the fire extinguishers are, and also if the fire doors are closing. So if you live in south or north, you'll have some fire doors that you'll see as you walk through the corridors. Those should shut, specifically in north, should shut once a fire alarm is activated. Now, fire alarms are different than smoke alarms. So a smoke alarm does not go directly to the fire department. Your smoke alarm comes to us at the gate, and then we'll respond to your smoke alarm. Your fire alarm is triggered by sprinklers or duct detectors, things of that nature. That is what sets off the fire alarms. So that's only when it gets bad. So if you're just in the smoke stage, we come. Martin County Fire Department instructs that all entries, doors, multi-level apartment buildings be kept closed to keep that positive pressure. And again, you don't want to introduce high oxygen levels. In an event of alarm, prepare to leave the apartment villa but wait for a few further instructions. So if you get an alarm and you know it's not in your apartment, we urge you to stay there in your apartment, okay? So do's and don'ts. Do pull the fire pool station. Do notify, notify security of the fire. So to give you an example, the pool station may be back here but the fire may be over here, right? So the pool station doesn't necessarily identify the location of the fire. It, it notifies us of an area that the fire may be in. So that's the other part of the alert. You need to let people know the exact precise location so they can respond to that area. Do not pull the e-cords. So the e-cords are for your life safety. Those are not for fire, so please don't pull those. Do not call the healthcare center, the reception desk, guard house to ask why the alarm sounds. So this happens all the time, and it continues to happen whenever we have a fire alarm in the community. We'll get tons and inundated with calls. So that doesn't help us because it doesn't, it, it ties up our phones. So I get tied up, reception gets tied up, so we can't communicate. So the way we communicate, if it was a false alarm, we would communicate via our Sarah system. And that's the, that's the lady's voice that calls you and, and, and is in, a, in a, uh, a computer voice that says, you know, whatever's going on. You guys have had plenty of those in the past. So that's how we would notify you guys of where, if there was or was not an actual fire. Okay. So our systems are monitored 24-7 by Johnson Control. Um, if they receive an alarm, they automatically dial 911. So anytime a fire alarm is triggered, they automatically come out. We will also get the notification. We will get there, obviously, first on scene to assess whether or not it was a true emergency or not. If the alarm is activated, remain calm and act promptly. Any questions?
We have to change the reel. We use the reel to reel. They're taping the reel. It broke. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so this is the current forecast, the CSU forecast for 2024. Um, 23 named storms, 115 named days, 11 hurricanes, um, three, uh, five major is what they're expected, 13 major hurricane days. And there you see the average on the right from 91 to 2020. So it's a significant jump. This is a, uh, a La Nina year el nino's gone by so when when she comes to town things get a little crazier you see all right so that's what they're expecting this year okay what are we doing sand hill cove what are we doing behind the scenes oh, we just we're doing a lot so we're contacting our vendors and those vendors could be food vendors, water vendors, um, waste management. You know, we're contacting all our vendors for the things that we need and also for the things we may need upon the end of the incident. We have already contacted our generator people to check the fuel, so we know we're topped off on the fuel, so we're good there. That's already been done. <clears throat> but we stay in contact with them in case we need a refill which is possible because if we lose power, then we're going to burn the fuel. Uh, the physical plant, as you guys know, whenever we have a hurricane and we're batting down the hatches, we have maintenance and security and housekeeping, everybody working together as a team. That's the plant group of people trying to help you. And the accounting direct, the outgoing accounting director too. She's been known to move things around on patios. So, Brett, that's in all other duties as assigned. So, so we've got to make sure we get him yep. up to speed. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Love you, Debbie. <laughs> um, Sorry, Kurt. So there are other <laughs> things that we do as well. You know, we have other services that we will provide for you. For instance, if you have outdoor patio furniture, we can help you bring it in or tie it down. If you have plants, we can assist you with your plants. So if there's a need that you may have, you just need to contact us and we can do it for you. Okay, so we're here to help you to do in that process. Uh, food and supplies, like we talked about, uh, we have these so many checklists. It's, it's amazing how many, it drives my mind bonkers. But we have checklist after checklist after checklist. And that's to make sure that we're not missing anything. And that's checklist for food, checklist for supplies. We do a lot of forms pre hurricane season. We also watch a lot of videos and have a lot of uh, Zoom calls or team calls to prepare. And that's also a good communication for us in corporate because we have corporate involved and corporate is a big part of helping us. Then we also look at what staffing we're going to have. So we look at what staffing is going to be here before the storm, what staffing is going to be here during the storm, and what staffing is going to be here after the storm. And then we have health at home. If you guys need someone from health at home, we got to make sure that we have enough people to staff for health at home. Communications. So we, like I said, we have meetings with residents. We have meetings with you to inform you. We also have a corporate website and hotline. The hotline number is up there. Reception has these numbers so they can pass them out to you. They do postcards. So you guys can have this information. Um, we also have a website. So during the hurricane, there'll be a link that you can check on or your family members can utilize to check on us. Uh, then the resident communications, we have channel 63 and care merge and then outside communication. Always call 911 in case of emergency. Please have a portable radio handy for you. And then you can text alert Martin to that number right there and they will give you updates that they get. Um, and then you can call FPL for any power outage information. That's 1-800-4-OUTAGE.
So our posture is going to change based on how far out the storm is. 96 hours, 72 hours, 48 hours, and 24 hours. Now, we're going to determine what we're going to do in that zone. If we're looking at a big five and we're the bullseye, at 96 hours, we need to make plans if we're going to evacuate to do it at that time. Anything later than that, and we're getting to a point of no return, right? We would prefer to hunker down and stick the storm out. But luckily for us, we haven't had a five, right? We've had threes. We haven't even had a four in a while. Um, but the time you get to 48 hours and 24 hours is when you need to determine whether you're going to shelter here, you're going to shelter in your own place. Um, if you have family nearby, are you going to shelter with them? That stuff needs to be worked out in that time frame. What is your responsibility? Okay, you have to prepare your... Uh, where, where, do we, where do we go? Too far? Oh, okay, here we go. So, so you're going to prepare for your personal uh, emergency supplies. And that's the next slide, by the way. She let the cat out of the bag there. So put together a to-go bag. Anybody heard what a to-go bag is? Okay, everybody knows, right? It's typically when you're going to have a child, you got a to-go bag, right? In case it, the water breaks and you got to run. So a to-go bag in this case is the same thing. It's the same thing for emergencies. Um, make sure your pet is registered. Wherever you're going to take your pet, make sure you do that well ahead of time. Complete your hurricane emergency contact form. Those forms will be going out end of the week. It will be in your mailboxes. So please get those in to us. Um, keep up to date on all communications. Check your renter's insurance policy as Sand Hill Cove is not responsible for personal effects if damaged by a hurricane. They make me say that every year. If you have friends or family in a safe area, make sure you make arrangements with them if you're going to stay with them. Make sure you let us know if you're going to stay with them. Uh, pick up Sand Hill Cove Hurricane and website and hotline postcards found at the front desk. So any information should be at the front desk for you. Uh, make sure you have your important documents ready to go with you in one safe and secure place. Insurance, medical cards, family addresses, telephone numbers. What supplies? I'm not going to run down this whole list. I think most of you get the idea of what supplies you're going to need. If you want a copy of the supplies, then Audra can provide that for you as well. But I will say a couple of things here. You want five to seven days of potable water, five to seven days of non-perishable food, fuel and batteries, flashlight and battery operated radio, blankets and pillows, medication, a 30 day supply. If we think it's going to be longer than 30 days. The governor will declare a state of emergency, and then you can get a longer supply amount. Ziploc freezer bags, very important. That Ziploc freezer bag will save your valuables from getting wet and uh, useless, to be, to be honest. Okay, let's go to the next one. What is your plan? Make arrangements with assisting and living aware of your oxygen needs in advance if you need oxygen. Your pet owners, we already talked about, you should find shelter for them. Gather five changes of comfortable clothing. Label the items you take in case we evacuate. Bring a large flashlight with extra batteries, a pillow blanket. If we evacuate, you will need cash and a credit card. If you plan to charge items to your room or hotel, to be determined with that. So the beginning of the hurricane season, you need to review the 2024 hur resident hurricane guide. Prepare yourself with your emergency supplies, register your pet, complete your evacuation questionnaire, complete and review your tenant HO4 insurance form and keep up to date on resident communications. If we evacuate, it's 100% mandatory if these things, one of these exists, is no power or no water, we have to evacuate. We can't stay here. That's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any? Jenny. In the past, when the first moved in, you had floor captains that would go to every resident on their floor to see what their plans were. Is that or Yeah, we'll handle that as staff. 
We'll have enough staff here on hand. Uh, I know the last time that we sheltered, we had staff that would go to different floors. And they, they stay in different areas on campus. Humane Society is still coming to us. Is that not true? Yes. 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 So some people don't know that. The Humane Society will only take so many, and I, we found that that. No, well, that's good. Any other questions? Uh, Kurt, I, yeah. I have a comment. Uh, yeah. Great job, by the way, and hopefully we won't um, need to evacuate this year either. Um, the, so each year, we want to update your batteries and your lantern. So in the month of June, what I need for you to do from now until June is to break out your lantern. If you do not have a lantern, and we'll put this in the weekly as well, if you do not have a battery operated lantern that we have provided to you, please let Heather know um, and we will place an order to have more lanterns on hand in June. If you do have a lantern, please be prepared to bring that down, probably at a cup of joe in June and we'll make sure that we change out the batteries and do the update um, for you there. I mean, we can, I'm, I'm seeing some rolling of the eyes. If you would like to change out the battery by yourself, that's fine. We can certainly provide you with a batter, two batteries. So if not, just feel free to bring those down and, and we'll change the batteries out. Okay. Any, any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. I just have a couple of community updates. I'm not looking at Debbie Kennedy yet. Um, so first of all, I want to say congratulations to Meryl Snyder and the scholarship committee. Is Kathy Garlington in here? She okay. She has, she she left. So. Great job, Meryl and team. You guys did a fantastic job. It's so awesome to see all of the attendees and um, the speaker was phenomenal. You were great. But most of all, it's about changing lives and um, seeing these young people up here. I can say that now because I just turned 53, so I'm over that 50 mark, you know. Um, but seeing those individuals and, and one that touched my heart um, is an individual who you don't get to see much of. Her name is Lena, and Lena is a utility worker. So what is a utility worker? She's a utility worker is an individual who works in the back of the house and in in, in back of the kitchen, and she is uh, washing dishes, she's sweeping, she's scrubbing pots and pans, ori originally from Haiti. Um, her daughter, Wilma, used to work for us as a server. I don't know if you recall her or not, but as Lena walked up to accept her daughter's award. I just had this really warm, just this incredible emotional feeling of would she be able to go to college if it weren't for her mother working here at Sand Hill Cove. And so I just wanted to share that with you and, and just again, thank all of you for your continuous support in the scholarship and, and the foundation. It really is changing lives, so thank you. Um, yes, we can certainly give them a round of applause. <laughs> um, so just quick update. Um, we were on a, uh, on a sale update call the other day. We're still on target for a close on June 27th. So that's when the equity transfer will occur and, and LCS is slated to own um, the 100% of, of Sand Hill Cove. So we're Super excited about that. They are now disclosing that um, our, the, the community will be financed through Bank of America. So Bank of America always seems to be a pretty good uh, lender and partner. Um, the other thing is uh, we, have, we have a new healthcare and billing system 
um, and that's called point click care. And I don't know if you guys have that back there or not, but um, so with this, and you're not gonna be able to see this, but with this new system, your billing statement is going to look different if there are two of you. Um, so I was gonna say, call Debbie if you have any questions, but she won't be here. Um, so the, the, our new biller who replaced Suzanne, who re, uh, retired after 29 years, her name is Allison. Um, and so if you do have questions come June, Regarding your bill, please call and ask to speak with Allison. She's a delightful individual, a great addition to our accounting department, and she can help navigate the bill here. Um, I was going to say one other thing about that. Debbie was, or Brett, was there something in particular that you wanted to, to call out on that? You want to come up? One more time. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> Please hold your applause. <laughs> All right, so you'll notice here there's a summary, statement summary, and it's going to list one resident and the second resident with the fee. So the, as you see, the 2318 would be the, like the second person, and then the one below that would be the monthly service fee for the first person. But what you notice here. The second, what we call the second person fee is now also called the monthly fee, but you all know the difference between a $2,000 monthly fee and a five or 4,000, right? But that's how it's gonna go. Can you switch to the next page? So it's gonna have the first resident listed and the second, and it's broken out by your name. So go back to the first page again, and then it summarizes it at the top. So it's just giving you a little more detail, but just making it a little confusing, but don't panic. It's gonna have the same information, and it's gonna be, you're gonna be billed the same way, it's just gonna, the formatting is just a little bit different, okay? And Brett will take care of it. <laughs> we entered. We did introduce him. He's been introduced we'll introduce at a couple of meetings, again. but Brett Landy is our accounting director. And he's ready to rock and roll. And he too has a personality, just like Debbie. Most accounting directors that I've worked with have been not as fun and as engaging as you two. All right, so um, speaking of which, we, uh, the department directors are gonna be out on Monday, May 20th. We're gonna be celebrating both Mary and, um, and Debbie. So we have a, 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 an outing plan for that day. Phyllis is out, um, she is re home recuperating and she will hopefully be back next week. I'll know more tomorrow what her return to work um, schedule is. I'm not sure, but I just wanted to, um, I think we put this in the weekly too, and I'm bringing this up that um, because the, the, the price of lobster has gone up. So, um, and I, did we put this in the weekly? Yeah, okay, good. So I don't need to say anything more about that? Okay. Um, the other thing is, is um, I've, I've referenced the carpet installation. So the carpet in the dining room um, is going to be changed to this. So um, I know it's, it's kind of hard to see, but Jill um, did work with the design committee. We had, I think, two, maybe two selections. Um, and so this one was ultimately selected. And then the, the carpet in the lounge, which corresponds or correlates that's not the right word, but you know what I'm saying. Um, this is going to be compliments. There you go. See, Debbie, you can't leave. Um, yeah, so this one here is going into the lounge area, and we're, we're projecting somewhere in the mid-July, mid I believe it is. So not really sure how that will go, if they'll do it at night. Um, if, if so, that would solve our challenges, but if not, we'll make it work. I uh, just wanted to, to share that with you. 
And I think, I think that's it. Any questions? OK, so we are going to navigate over to Debbie's uh, little retirement gathering. And as I was, pardon me? Yeah, from, yeah. So um, we have a little message for you. Um, but I, I, I have to say, as I was walking over here, Debbie, I said to Kyle as he was giving me my, my speaker, I said, I don't really want to be here. And I said, maybe if, if we don't go through with this, then that means that Debbie wouldn't retire. But then I thought about Brett, and I thought, oh boy, we've already hired him, so I, I, I have to go. I have to, I have to move forward. So um, we have a little message from uh, John Taggetts for you. For those of you who don't know, John Taggetts was one of the, I guess, the second executive director and um, is the individual who hired uh, Debbie. So we have that message, and uh, we're going we're gonna to try and share that with you, Debbie, if we can get one day to work. Hey, Debbie, John here. I understand that you have decided to retire from Sand Hill Cove. Um, congratulations. I'm happy for you. It's been a very long, successful career. Uh, I started thinking about when you came on board. I remember interviewing you. I remember having you start, and we did not do the best job of uh, the onboarding and orientation experience for you. And um, you were a trooper, you hung in there. In hindsight, um, we could have done a lot better, but I'm glad that you, uh, you uh, hung in there at the beginning because it sure paid off for the community and hopefully for you. Uh, best of luck to you. Hopefully our paths will cross down the road and um, you will be greatly missed. Good luck. So how this is going to go is we do have a slideshow prepared for Debbie um, to share with you. Um, I have a couple of words. And then I've also asked um, Mary to come up and, and share um, some words of wisdom as well. So um, we're going to start this PowerPoint from the beginning. Debbie, I had a lot of fun finding pictures of you. I have more pictures of Debbie in my phone than I realized. So, so Debbie has been with us for 26 years. Um, and uh, she, uh, so a great, great accounting director must have great time management, great communication skills, and great attention to detail. And what I t will tell you about Debbie is when you talk about um, time management, Debbie comes in at eight, she, she, just, she just keeps right to her tasks for the day. She takes a lunch break every day at 12.30. Um, and, and I think that's good, that's, that's healthy. Um, and it's healthy for us all to see, to see that. And she is such a numbers person um, that we have uh, a cake in the back, too, that says, show me the money, Debbie, for you, <laughs> with a clock that the only number that's on the clock is 12. All the other numbers have, have um, fallen off. So a couple of other things I want to say about um, Debbie is, is that, yes, Debbie has been with us for 26 years, and um, Debbie has had no audit adjustments over the 26 years. The other thing that I will say about Debbie is, is that with any corporation, there are monthly reconciliations. And most accounting directors um, really kind of buck at that and, and, and don't really like going through that extra layer. Um, but our corporation requires us to do, it's called black line. And I get a report every month that goes to my boss and my boss's boss and my boss's boss's boss because the reconciliations are so important. And I, I've been in my position here since 2018, been with the community since 2016, and I think Debbie has achieved 
the 100% black line status, which is good um, for probably, I don't know, for as long as, that we, as, as, long as you've been doing it. Um, so that's really a kudos to her to making sure that the books are balancing and, and so forth. So congratulations um, to you, Debbie, for that as well. And then another thing that I want to share with you is, um, is that, uh, yes, Debbie is definitely fun. Um, she is, and, and she has many, many looks. Um, as we go through this, you'll see she may have a long blonde ponytail, then she may have red spiked hair, that she may, but uh, just a lot of fun. Uh, Debbie, Debbie's a lot of fun to, to have around. The accounting team continuously scored very high resident satisfaction, most recently 94%. So um, I, I think that's just a reflection on how hard that team works and will continue to work to make sure that your bills are, are accurate and that we're not overbilling. Um, the other thing is, is that how many of you were in an, in an accounting position? Anyone have to collect money, accounts receivable? So I will tell you, in our accounts receivable, we have 12 days. I mean, I have worked for organizations that have, you know, I'm going to kind of jump around here, but where there's millions of dollars in receivables that have not been collected. We have 12 days worth of receivables. That is unheard of. And I'd like to give Debbie another round of applause for that. All right. Mary, you want to come up and... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I remember when Debbie was hired. Um, Debbie was hired 26 years ago. We were just out of development, and um, there were two positions, directorial positions that were approved. One was the director of accounting, and the other was director of human resources. And um, when Debbie showed up, number one, I was really thrilled that Debbie was a female, okay? <laughs> Really thrilled that Debbie was a woman. Um, and uh, number two, you see how short her hair is there? It was a lot shorter and it was spiked red. <laughs> do you remember the, Do you remember that, Kay? No? Oh well. <laughs> well, I'll never forget it because she really didn't have the look of the accountant, okay? She really had the look of a party girl. <laughs> And that she is, yes, that she is. Um, but uh, seriously, when, when Debbie started, um, what I learned about her was that she had been divorced and uh, she was married young and she had two adult children. And what she actually did was, um, while she was raising her children, she went and got a degree in accounting, um, which was really pretty spectacular, Deb. So when she started, she had two grown children and over the years, her family grew, um, and she now has six grandchildren. And are you sitting down? She's got four great-grandchildren. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's really pretty extraordinary for someone. And her mom, Kay, is sitting next to her. So that makes you a great-great-grandma, Kay, right? Okay, um, but it's a lovely family. It's a family that's very close, and, and I think um, that Kay and, and Debbie, as the matriarchs of the family, um, really keep that together. Um, Debbie's staff have been consistent for the whole 26 years that she is here, and um, that in itself speaks volumes to the respect that she has shown her team and to the, um, to the faith that she has had in them to do a really great job. Over the years, Debbie, you have produced thousands of bills out of that department. 
and collected hundreds of thousands of dollars. And you have always been the rudder for this management team to keep everyone on track and to pay attention to the expenditures. And most importantly, to always have you as the residents in mind. Because Debbie has been a wonderful steward of all of your expenses. And um, I know, Debbie, you and I are parting. Um, and we know that the community will go on. And uh, we've got some good people in place. But I know from the bottom of my heart and from the bottom of your heart, Deb, that you're going to miss everyone here. So I want to thank you, Deb. It's been a pleasure to know you and to work with you. Thank you, Mary. Does anyone else like to say anything? I know that Debbie has worked behind the scenes, but being here for 26 years, I, I know that there may be relationships. Um, so if any, anyone would like to say anything? Tom. Hi, everybody. My name is Tom, and Debbie is my stepdaughter. And when I met Debbie, I started dating Kay. Debbie was 12 years old. When Kay and I got married, Debbie was 14. And I quickly realized that Debbie is a type A person. <laughs> Debbie knew what she wanted, and she knew how to get what she wanted. All very good traits, except oftentimes that led her to a lot of trouble with her mother. <laughs> but I quickly found out Debbie, as a little girl, a poor little girl, just simply could not tell a lie. And to this day, she doesn't tell lies. And she got married, and no, I have to, this story I have to tell you, because this, this epitomizes Debbie in my mind. Debbie was really wild about horses. She liked horses. She's always wanted a horse. She loves riding horses. And she had a family in the area that she kept the horse for. And but keeping that horse, she was allowed to ride the horse. So she was very much into horses. Now, I don't know how it came about, but one day we were talking about Roger Battister breaking the four-minute mile. And how great that was. Debbie says, I can do that. And at that time, I said, Debbie, no woman in the history of the world has ever broken a four-minute mile. She says, I can do that. Well, we had been walking around the neighborhood. We had a one-mile course laid out. So Debbie takes off with her sister Patty going along behind her on the bicycle. So I'm sitting there watching the clock go down, and pretty soon I hear Patty, go, Debbie, go, Debbie, go, Debbie. And I'm thinking to myself, God, I'm going to have to buy a damn horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, didn't, she did not break the four-minute mile, but she did run the mile in five minutes. No training, no coaching, 15 years old, I think, maybe. And that just, to me, epitomizes Debbie. She wants something. She knows how to go get it. Well, she got married, had two kids. The marriage didn't last, so Debbie was a single mother raising two kids, holding down a full-time job, and going to school to get her accounting degree. And then she came to work to Sand Hill Cove. And, honey, I just want to tell you, I love you more than I can express. <laughs> And, and not too long ago, Debbie made me very happy. She said, can I call you dad? Aww. Anytime. I don't know, Mary. He got me on that one. Anyone else? Pete. Uh, I'm going to stay with mom and then I'll come to Pete, okay? Debbie's the reason we're at Sand Hill Cove. She told us, when the time comes, you need to move to Sand Hill Cove. Well, wouldn't you think 
that the director of accounting would know that when we move to Sand Hill Cove, her inheritance goes away. <laughs> That's okay. We're, we're, we're going to keep Debbie on the books as a consultant, right, Brad? Yeah, so, Debbie, don't, don't you worry. We got you covered. Pete Morrissey. I just wanted to say that, uh, thank Debbie, she's uh, been so patient with the Finance Committee and the Resident Council over the years with all the questions. Uh, she's heard them all before, but she always gets the answer right, but, but nobody's perfect. Uh, she has a few shortcomings, one of which is as a teacher. Uh, she used to teach an accounting course here, one day course for people joining the Finance Committee. I took that course seven years and I never passed it, which, anyway, but we love you and we'll miss you. Thank you. That is awesome. I love that. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Bob Forbush. Thank you, Sean. As, as one of the, I don't know how many chairs of the Finance Committee that Debbie had to deal with over those 26 years, I would like to say thank you, thank you for being so receptive and helpful to those of us who uh, were in that chair for a while. Uh, Pete touched on the uh, attempt Debbie made to educate us about the accounting procedures that were in place at Sand Hill Cove and how to understand the numbers that we received at the time and how to help, because it did uh, exist at that time, we could help with the preparation of the annual budgets that were made. Uh, I'm amazed that Debbie was able to put up with us for those 26 years. My predecessor, George Stewart, <laughs> would probably also be amazed that you were able to stay and, uh, and put up with us. But Debbie, thank you for uh, all of your loving attention and uh, your help uh, as we tried to help you, <laughs> in quotes. I pony in here on his back on behalf of the, of the Scholarship Foundation, where there's been so much marvelous support from everyone here. Guess who's deposited the checks? Thank you, Debbie, above and beyond for everything. All right, anyone else? Debbie, it's all, it's all you. You want to come up and share anything? It's funny, I was thinking, I was 40 years old when I started working here, and I did have short, spiked red hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally true. And I probably have changed my hair color more than anybody here, and styles. But isn't that what we all, can, all us women can do? We can change our hair easily. So I've always done that. And I did come here just about right out of college with two children. And I was working down in West Palm Beach at a CPA firm. And I saw an ad for Sand Hill Cove. And I said to my mom, I said, I think I can do that job. I think I'm going to apply. And sure, and that's how it started. Now here I am at 66 years old. I'm ready to do something different. I'm ready to play golf. We talked about the horses. I'm planning on going um, do a, do, do a week horseback riding out either Wyoming or um, Colorado, somewhere out there, and rustle cattle and that kind of stuff. And while I still can do it, that is, I've got a trip with my parents this summer. 
that I'm going to go in their RV with them with my little do miniature dachshund, Nikki. If you all, a lot of you have met Nikki. And I've got a cruise I'm going on in July, so I'm just ready to get started and enjoy a different part of my life. I, I'm going to miss every one of you. You've all touched my heart in one way or another. Some were a little more challenging than others, <laughs> as we mentioned, but it, it's been a great ride. I've loved every minute of it, and I want to thank you all very much. Debbie, I have one question for you. So Debbie, whenever there's an opportunity to fundraise for, like say, Alzheimer's, Debbie was always the first person to raise her hand. She was always the first person to show up and be there with her, with her dog, Nikki. But um, so question, will you join us for the Alzheimer's walk in October? Absolutely. Yeah, and that's the kind of person that she is, so. I feel like, go ahead. Sorry. I think it's time for refreshments. Let's have a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, spoken like a true uh, trooper. Debbie, we, we love you, we miss you, and we wish you all the best. And thank you so much for being a great partner and doing the budget with me every year and the department directors and just keeping us on point. You truly are an amazing person, great accounting director, and uh, we must keep in touch. Yes, so, all right, thank you. All right, that does conclude our meeting. We have uh, wine and cheese and, and cake back there for Debbie, so grab what you can. We'll help you get to your seat and...